British Cycling uh, have banned trans women from competing in female categories. Female races will now be for those whose sex was assigned female at birth. Uh, Flona McKenna, who is sports director at Fair Play for Women, joins us now. So are you pleased with this decision? Yes, I think it's about time that women had fairness in cycling. Uh, I think it's taken a long time, actually. You know, these rules were adopted so casually years ago to let certain males into the female category. And um, it's been quite a battle to restore what we all know is a common sense approach to sport, which is to say, if you are female, if you're born female and you don't have the advantages of male puberty, then you need a protected category. Otherwise, you'll have no chance in sport. So we're really glad to see it. Now, Fiona, it's, it's caused controversy from uh, a transgender cyclist called Emily Bridges, who says this is genocide by British cycling, was the quote that I saw, and, and ends her chances of competing at the Olympics next year. Now, the bit that struck me was that Emily Bridges says that uh, she has no advantage over other women racers uh, and that the previous requirement that riders in the female category had testosterone levels below five nanomoles for, for, per litre for 12 months uh, ensured that there was fairness. So what, what do you say to what Emily Bridges has to say? Well, unfortunately, that's absolute nonsense. You know, there are 16 or 17 studies now published around the world that show that if you reduce testosterone in a male body, you diminish their performance a little bit, but you in no way remove the male performance advantage because not much changes when you reduce testosterone. Um, and so uh, uh, that's why an open category is a great solution. Um, Emily's not banned from competing. Um, Emily was a very good cyclist, uh, was a world junior, uh, junior GB record holder um, uh, as a male. And uh, it's free to continue to compete in the open category. And that's how it should be. But it means that women and girls will not have their chances prejudiced by having to race against males. So when people say there's no evidence that, you know, Emily has an advantage or we need to do more science, we don't. We all know that you cannot reverse male puberty. And so this is the only fair solution. Now, Fiona, I, the, I suppose the one caveat from, from your uh, happiness about this, I guess, might be that it, do, it only applies to competitive events. It doesn't apply to non-competitive events. What do, you, what do you think of that? Is this, a, is this something that needs addressing or is, is the decision a reasonable compromise? Well, you know, we shouldn't be compromising female fairness and safety, should we? Why are we starting with a compromise where we've got a certain proportion of males who are allowed into female events. What I say is there should be open, there should be mixed, but if you advertise a women-only bike ride, as uh, British Cycling does, then it should be women-only. And I think it's a, a daft uh, approach to take to say that, as they have done, that non-binary people are welcome in the women-only breeze rides. Why would a non-binary person want to be in a women-only event? We hear from lots of women who have good reasons why they want to be in a women only event. And uh, I think they should be allowed to have that. So, no, there's more work to do here to restore what is a reasonable expectation for women and girls. Yeah. And it was always about, you know, a fairness at the end of the day. I and mean, you've been on a long journey, haven't you, to get this. I mean, I always used to say, gosh, why have we made it all so complex? If it was boxing, you'd have different weights and different categories to make sure that the two people uh, competing against one another had a fair sort of chance. So it does seem it's been a rather long journey you've been on to get this matter sorted. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, these rules that it let males into the female category were adopted so casually and then we're having to fight so hard just to get back to what we all know is a common sense approach. And it's important to say that even in boxing, which has always had weight categories, they've also always had sex categories. Because if you put a man and a woman of the same weight, whether they're big or small, if you put them against each other, the man is always going to knock 10 bells out of the woman. And we all know that. And so... <laughs> It's, you know, you can't just say, forget sex, let's do it on some other criterion like size or weight, because that wouldn't be fair on women. Fiona, thank you so much. I'm sure lots of our viewers will agree wholeheartedly with what you've been saying. Uh, that's uh, Fiona McKenna, uh, Sports Director for Fair Play for Women. Thank you very much indeed.